What happens when two of the densest objects in the universe collide? What kind of cosmic fireworks would such a cataclysmic event produce? And what secrets would it reveal about the origin of the heaviest elements in nature? Well, you're about to find out. Because in this episode, we're going to talk about one of the most spectacular phenomena in astrophysics, kilonova. These are powerful explosions that occur when two neutron stars or a neutron star and a black hole merge, releasing huge amounts of energy and matter into space. And thanks to the amazing capabilities of the James Webb Space Telescope, we have just witnessed one of these events in unprecedented detail, challenging some of our existing theories about how they work. So buckle up and get ready for a journey into the extreme physics of kilonova. Before we dive into the latest discovery, let's take a step back and explain what neutron stars and kilonova are and how they differ from supernova, which you may be more familiar with. Neutron stars are the remnants of massive stars that have exhausted their nuclear fuel and collapsed under their own gravity. They are incredibly dense, with masses comparable to the sun squeezed into spheres about 10 kilometers across. A teaspoon of neutron star matter would weigh billions of tons on Earth. Neutron stars are also spinning very fast, have very strong magnetic fields, and emit beams of radiation from their poles. Sometimes, neutron stars are found in pairs, orbiting each other very closely. As they lose energy due to gravitational waves, they spiral inward and eventually merge in a violent collision. This is what we call a kilonova, a term coined by astronomers to describe an event that is about a thousand times brighter than a classical nova, but still much fainter than a supernova. A kilonova is also different from a supernova in its origin and aftermath. A supernova is the explosion of a single star at the end of its life cycle, while a kilonova is the merger of two compact objects. A supernova leaves behind either a neutron star or a black hole while a kilonova can produce either a more massive neutron star or a black hole, depending on the masses of the original objects. One of the most fascinating aspects of kilonova is that they are thought to be the main source of some of the heaviest elements in the universe, such as gold, platinum, uranium, and others. These elements cannot be created by normal nuclear fusion in stars, but require a process called rapid neutron capture, or R process, which involves bombarding atomic nuclei with lots of neutrons in a very short time. This can only happen in extreme environments, such as those created by kilonova. When two neutron stars merge, they eject some of their material into space at high speeds. This material is rich in neutrons and undergoes R-process nucleosynthesis, forming new and heavier elements. As these unstable nuclei decay, they release energy and radiation that power the kilonova emission. The first theoretical prediction of kilonova was made by Lee and Pachinsky in 1998, but it took more than a decade for observational evidence to emerge. The first candidate kilonova was detected in 2013 by several telescopes following a short gamma-ray burst, GRB, which is a brief flash of high-energy photons that can be associated with kilonova. However, it was not until 2017 that we had the first definitive detection of a kilonova thanks to an unprecedented multi-messenger observation that combined gravitational waves and electromagnetic radiation. This brings us to the new discovery made by the James Webb Space Telescope, which has several instruments that can observe different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Recently, James Webb detected an incredibly bright gamma-ray burst, GRB, that lasted for about 34 seconds. This was one of the longest and brightest GRBs ever seen, and it was quickly identified as coming from a kilonova event. Webb followed up on this GRB with multiple observations over several days, capturing the evolution of the kilonova emission across different wavelengths. This was the first time James Webb was used to observe such an event, and it provided us with stunning images and spectra that revealed new details about the physics of kilonova. One of the most surprising findings was that the optical light from the kilonova did not fade quickly as expected, but remained bright for several days after the GRB. This indicated that some of the ejected material was free of heavy elements, such as lanthanides, that would normally block the optical radiation. This suggested that the kilonova had a complex structure, with different layers of ejecta having different compositions and velocities. James Webb was also able to detect the signature of some of the heavy elements produced by the R process, 
such as tellurium and lanthanides, confirming that kilonova are indeed the sites of heavy element synthesis. The location of the kilonova was also interesting, as it was found in a relatively nearby galaxy, NGC 4993, which is about 130 million light years away from us. This means that we were able to see the kilonova in great detail, but also that such events are not very rare in the universe. In fact, astronomers estimate that kilonova occur about once every 10,000 years in a typical galaxy, which means that there are probably thousands of them happening every day across the observable universe. The new detection of a kilonova by Webb has not only confirmed some of our previous predictions, but also challenged some of our existing theories about how they work. One of the main questions that arises from this observation is, what caused the long GRB that accompanied the kilonova? GRBs are usually classified into two types, short and long, depending on their duration. Short GRBs last less than two seconds and are thought to be produced by kilonova while long GRBs last more than two seconds and are thought to be produced by supernova. However, the GRB observed by Webb was clearly a long one, lasting for 34 seconds, but it was also clearly associated with a kilonova. How can we explain this contradiction? One possible explanation is that the merger of two neutron stars can produce a long GRB under certain conditions, such as when the resulting object is a rapidly spinning black hole surrounded by a disk of accreting matter. This scenario could generate a powerful jet of high-energy particles that would produce the GRB emission. However, this jet would have to last for much longer than usual, and it would have to be misaligned with our line of sight, so that we would not see it directly, but only its afterglow. This would require a very specific combination of parameters that may not be very common. Another possible explanation is that the merger of two neutron stars can produce a different kind of object, a magnetar. A magnetar is a highly magnetized neutron star that can have a magnetic field up to a quadrillion times stronger than Earth's. A magnetar could also generate a jet of high-energy particles, but in this case the jet would be powered by the magnetic energy rather than the accretion energy. This jet could also produce a long GRB, but it would be more variable and less collimated than the jet from a black hole. A magnetar could also explain why some of the ejecta from the kilonova was lanthanide-free as the magnetar could heat up and blow away some of the material with its strong winds. Both scenarios have their pros and cons, and more observations are needed to test them and to determine what kind of object was formed by the kilonova. JWST and other telescopes will continue to monitor this event and look for more clues about its nature and origin. We have reached the end of this episode, where we have learned about one of the most amazing phenomena in astrophysics, Kilonova. We hope you enjoyed this episode and learned something new. If you did, please give us a like and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave us a comment below with your questions or suggestions for future topics. Thank you for watching and see you next time.